Karen, this report confirms what every parent was worried about. What's your number one takeaway? My number one takeaway is that we really have a problem on our hands. The, the gains that we're seeing across this year, there were some, but they are not on par with what we see in a typical year. And when we get to the end of the year, the declines we're seeing relative to a more normal year suggest the kind of growth that it's gonna to take to catch up is a multi-year effort. And I think we need to be realistic as we're going back to the classroom this coming fall that we are just starting the process of recovery and we have a long battle ahead of us. Jeff, take us to Harlem. Our most vulnerable kids more behind than they already were. You see this day in and day out. What are you seeing right now in the classroom? Uh, I'm seeing that there are priority children in Harlem and in communities like Harlem around this country uh, that simply haven't shown up at all. Uh, they haven't attended school remotely or in person. Uh, it's a significant number of children we should be concerned about. Children with special needs, we know this year has been a disaster for those kids. Uh, students who are already struggling beforehand, uh, we know have suffered the most and there's one thing, I, I'm going to come on your show, Stephanie, I never like to correct you on your own show, but this is what I'm going to say. We actually do know what happened to those students who weren't coming to school. It's worse than what Karen is reporting. You can, you can bet your bottom dollar those children are actually further behind. Uh, and uh, this should be a signal. I mean, this is... Karen, thank you. Break the glass. Pull the alarm. We've got to do something. And it's not going to be a short term intervention. And if schools who were failing before continue to do what didn't work, we're going to see an even worse gap growing uh, in particularly students of color, poor students across this country. We as educators, we've got to really take this study seriously and we've got to act differently. But Jeffrey, you didn't need this study to know this. You've been joining me on this program for the last year, sounding this very alarm. You said no summer off. These schools in vulnerable communities need to have full time summer school. We need to treat this as an emergency now. It didn't happen. Why? It didn't happen, it didn't happen uh, because uh, I think we didn't have the leadership at the top demanding uh, that this needs to happen. So your, your segment that just preceded this, you were talking about businesses demanding folks get vaccinated, whether they wanted to or not, because that's what's good uh, for their business. Our schools needed to run summer program here at the Harlem Children's Own. Tomorrow is our last day of full summer school because we assessed our students, we figured out who were the most vulnerable, we mandated that they come to school uh, all of July. And now we're going to have our more camp time for the next few weeks going on. It'll still be some support. We should have been doing this all around the country. We didn't have the leaders step up. Yes, teachers are tired. Yes, we had to think differently. I agree. But this is something we could have done. We just lack the will to get this done. Karen, Jeff is saying leaders didn't step up. And as a result, our kids have fallen down. We are headed back to school in the fall. What do we need to do in this new normal? Because it's not just, hey, let's head back to the classroom. We're in a crisis. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think the kind of call to action that we see in these results is that going back to the old normal is just not acceptable. That we need as adults to collectively be creating the new normal that will uh, start to really reckon with these inequities that were there before the pandemic and have only been exacerbated, exacerbated by it. So for us, getting these results out was critical because this is a moment where there is actually kind of an influx of federal funding that we've never seen before that can be devoted towards recovery. And our call to action is the pandemic was uneven in how it impacted kids and allocating the recovery funds must also be uneven. We must get supports to the kids and the schools that will most benefit from those supports in this moment. Jeff, unlike most years, the funds are actually available. Those leaders are listening. What's the number one thing they need to do to solve this or at least address it? Uh Yes, we've got to make sure that we have really specific plans, not general plans, specific plans that say, if I know I'm teaching a fourth grade 
and all of my students coming in did not finish third grade. What is my plan for both teaching fourth grade material, but also uh, sort of working with those students so that they can learn the fundamental skills that they needed to learn in the third grade? This is complicated, but it's not rocket science. We could figure that out. We've got to be smart, and we can't leave it to teachers to figure this out on their own in individual classrooms. Every school should be focused on this right now. The leadership, the principals, the superintendents, they should be coming up with the plan to do both things because it's hard for teachers with a full classroom of students who are struggling to figure out how to do this on their own. The other thing I'll say, Stephanie, we have the money now to bring in the additional resources both academic and mental health counselors to help these students succeed. We need to incorporate these plans. They need to be transparent. Everybody should be able to see how we're gonna spend that money to deal with this crisis in particular. 